All right, so today we're diving into a story that I got to admit, when I first heard it, I thought it was a joke. Well, I know, right? It's one of those you can't make this stuff up kind of situations. Exactly. Yeah. So imagine this. Um, you finally made it, right? You've, you've saved up. You've achieved the dream. You're buying a McLaren supercar. We're, we're not talking just any car here. This is top of the line, sleek, powerful, the kind of car you see in magazines and dream about. A million dollar masterpiece of engineering, as they say. <laughs> and, then, and then the recall notice arrives. But here's the kicker. The possible culprit. A sponge. Yeah, you read that right. A sponge yeah. <laughs> seems like something out of a cartoon. But as we dig into this 2020 McLaren recall, it actually reveals a lot about engineering, risk, and maybe even a little bit about how much faith we put in luxury brands. Okay, so you've piqued my interest. I'll give you that. But before we get into like the nitty gritty, can you set the stage for us? What's the article we're looking at and what's the deal with this recall? Sure thing. So the article that really got us in digging into this is from, get this, Documento Sin Titulo 1.pdf, which is a whole other story. Yeah, you gotta love this filing. Right. But anyway, it dives deep into this McLaren recall from, like I said, 2020. Apparently, they used these foam pads under the fuel tanks in four of their top models, the Senna, which is like... The Crown Jewel, the 720S, the 570 GT, and even the McLaren GT. So we're talking about some serious cars here, not exactly your everyday commute. Exactly. And these foam pads, they were supposed to absorb vibrations from the fuel tank, you know, make the ride extra smooth, extra luxurious. Oh, I see. A little extra padding for the super rich. What could possibly go wrong? Well, that's just it. The foam, it was a bit too good at its job. It wasn't just soaking up vibration. See, it was soaking up moisture too, like from the air. Oh, okay. I think I see where this is going. And that's uh, not ideal for a metal fuel tank, I'm assuming. Not ideal at all, no. The article, it goes into how this trapped moisture, it basically sat there against the fuel tank thanks to the foam, created like a perfect environment for corrosion, you know? And that eventually led to cracks and leaks in the tanks. So much for that smooth ride. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm no engineer or anything, but I'm pretty sure a leaky fuel tank, not what you want in any car, let alone something like a high-performance McLaren. You're telling me we're talking about cars that are practically rockets on wheels, pushing the limits of speed, you know, fuel leak in that situation. That's That could be disastrous, way beyond just, like, engine trouble. Yeah, that's, that's a little frightening when you put it that way. And it wasn't just a couple of cars either, right? I think the article mentioned over 2,000 vehicles. Try over 2,700 vehicles affected by this recall. Just picture that. The lawsuits, the damage to McLaren's reputation. If there had been, like, serious accidents because of this. Yeah, that's, I mean, even for a company known for, you know, being at the top of their game engineering-wise, that's going to be a huge blow. Huge. And to make matters worse, it wasn't their only recent recall either. Like, the year before, they had that issue with the Senna, the million-dollar one, remember? Faulty electrical wiring that time. Two recalls in a row. <laughs> Attach. So how they handle it, this whole sponge situation, did they, like, try to downplay it? To their credit, no, they didn't. The article, it makes it clear that McLaren, they acted fast, issued the recall, went through the NHTSA, that's the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration here. Right, right. They right. inspected, repaired the cars, the whole nine yards. Okay, well, at least there's that. Owned up to it, took steps to fix it. Still, though, it makes you wonder... How does something like this even happen at a place like McLaren? I mean, aren't they supposed to be, like, meticulous about this stuff? I mean, you think right. McLaren, you think precision engineering, cutting-edge tech, and then, bam, a sponge takes them down. It's almost ironic, isn't it? But it really underscores this constant tension in engineering, this push and pull between, like, ultimate performance and, and basic reliability. Right. Right, because you're always trying to innovate, trying to use the latest materials, the most advanced designs. Exactly. And sometimes that means you end up with, well, a super absorbent foam pad, which it really shouldn't be. And a whole lot of expensive repairs later, you realize, huh, maybe simpler was better in this case. Sometimes, yeah. But, you know, thinking about it more broadly, this whole thing, it's a good reminder for all of us, not just, you know, the car fanatics out there. Oh, absolutely. I mean... How often do we see a flashy ad for the latest gadget or whatever, and we just eat it up, hmm. assuming that because it's expensive, it must be perfect, right? Right. And this McLaren situation shows that even the big names, the ones with all the supposed expertise, they can make mistakes too. No one's infallible. So what's the takeaway for our listeners today? What mm -hmm. should they be keeping in mind, especially in our world of like constant new products and tech? I'd say it's a call to be informed consumers. Don't just buy into the hype, you know? 
<laughs> do a little digging. Ask some questions. Look beyond the brand name. Exactly. Because <laughs> a little knowledge, it can go a long way. Maybe even save you from a supercar sponge situation of your own. Now, that will be a story for another deep dive. Until next time, then. Right. Until next time.